Right, hello, let's try this again. Last video didn't work. So, uh, anyway, something a bit different this time. Uh, not a tutorial, but rather a demo of a tool that I have been working on. Um, it is a physics, in engine physics, flow map painting tutorial, tool thing. Um, bit of a mouthful, but hopefully we can see what it does. Um, so, uh, these are my flow map render targets. Uh, and this is my water material. Obviously, it's not moving because my flow map is black. Um, if you don't know what a flow map is, then you should check out my other video that explains them that I just made. Um, firstly, I'm just going to reset all my flow maps. So I've got that mid red, uh, mid green color um, for my uh, my default color for my start for my flow map. And then I'm just going to click play. Checked out, and I can start painting my flow map. So this is my spawner. This is the manager that controls everything. If I just quickly go in here and toggle the simulation, you can see I get lots of little physics spheres that are just being spawned, a bit like rain coming down, and as they run down the surface, they're just line tracing down, hitting a render target and spawning um, or painting onto that um, my flow map. Um, scaled quite low. Obviously, as these things write to it, they keep writing to it, so the, the whole time the numbers are never getting bigger. Things are moving faster and, and more, so a uh, nice default low value there is good. But um, but you can see, start of writing in that, and the little grates, um, it's coming around it. We're actually getting flow the way it would physically um, interact with that. Maybe our lifetime is a bit low. I want these balls to live a bit longer, so they come off the end. So I'm not getting any flow here. Um, and the texture that's being written is this is this sort of spherical gradient. Um, and it, maybe it's a bit small. So if I do that, I can clear off my, my balls, reset, and start again. Uh, it's all dynamic within the engine. Um, just going to watch these down. And I can wait until this is all full. I'm actually writing down here. Maybe that's a bit more accurate. Uh, and say, right, reset there and start painting. And now it's all sort of painting at once everywhere. Um, and you get full control over all these things. Obviously, the bigger the texture size, and here it's quite a small gap. So you need to make sure that those kinds of things don't interact. We've kind of lost. Well, they're still there a little bit, but starting to lose that. Uh, I can just stop. There is is my flow map. Just scale that down. And that's just scaling the material parameter. Um, obviously, settings in here. Spawn rate, spawn radius. Spawn radius is actually dynamic and interactable. I just grab this locator, scale it up. How big my spawn radius is. Um, and then obviously like lifetime and how often to trace. Um, so in this case, it's only tr doing a line trace every 0.2 seconds. So you can adjust your update time and things. Um, quite a nice result like that. Um, this one, more of a slide. I start here, much bigger spheres. Um, fill that up. Don't have to worry about colliding with small objects. So I can have these much bigger. Um, let me move that in um, and have them all there. Maybe a bit too big to be honest. That down 0.15 maybe. Um, you can see, hopefully as it's writing on here, we're getting that flow starting to come in. Um, let's just reset that. Again, to scale, texture ratio, all this. Um, oh, I should have said on this one really. Um, I'm using a texture ratio here. It's the same ratio as the size of my mesh. So this is a 6 by 1.75 scaled. So I just do 1.75 divided by 6. And that keeps the texture as it stamps square. Um, doesn't have to be square. I could change here. I could take my texture ratio. If I clear and reset. Let's just stop all this. Take my texture ratio. If I just spawn a single ball. It's the slide. Come on. Here we go. You can see the ratio. The way it works is it's applying this square to this UV, but actually because this is long and stretched, it appears long and stretched on our set my intensity up nice and high. See we're getting these long thin flows. And maybe that's what you want. It's a flow map after all. It's quite a laminar sort of directional flow. Um side. Here we go. Starting to get a few. So uh, that's what the texture ratio does. You can scale that down. Obviously, the texture size, it's so it's sort of a measure of how big it is. Um, let me set, spawn a few. One hit the slide. The radius is too big. 
getting it to say it's quite dotty because of the update time. That up a higher, getting up up a line being drawn. See it's hitting the sides and, and things. Um, if I turn this back on to full simulation, might tank the frame rate because I'm doing a line choice every 0.01 per ball. But this is never designed to run at runtime, is it? It's always going to be just a an offline tool. Um, getting some very big numbers now. We'll fix that later. But the problem you have with this, this is where the fact that it's using a physics simulation and not a fluid simulation, um, this would never be static, would it? Obviously with a fluid, this would be kind of flowing all the time, but there's nothing stopping us going in here, moving this around dynamically, just painting there, just acting like a paintbrush. Um, and if I just reset that, now we're getting that kind of written everywhere, uh, that direction of flow written into our, to our flow map. Um, Turn that off. Scale this right down. See, getting a, if not a bad result. It's a bit too low. Um, cool, very nice. Uh, next one. Made this kind of riverbed. Um, what's happening here? What's any difference? Well, a it's sort of colliding with a bit more interesting geometry. Um, it's starting to fill up. I want to kind of like approximate that initial force. This isn't just starting here, is it? There's there's more river up here. Um, well, we've got down here a force. So force location is just an interactable widget again. Let's see if I put that quite a bit closer to where my my spawning location is. Up my impulse strength. Let's clear that off and reset. They're now being spawned and pushed this way. It's just a radial force, um, and obviously where you put that. They're a bit big, they're starting to block in. One clear reset. Crazy. Um, you can see it's quite a sort of dynamic interactive process. Um, it's too small. Um, so you're not just doing like a simulation offline and then hoping that. I mean, you'll probably get quite realistic results if you do a proper fluid sim, but there's nothing stopping us going in here. Um, and like I say, maybe I could just push this down like that and use that force to push it through. Fun. This. Um. And you'll get a decent result. Um, with testing. Uh, and there's nothing stopping you creating a few of these with different settings at different parts of your river, depending on what kind of. Um, effect you're going for. Obviously the force of this one's now going to be affecting these, so maybe it's not too good a thing. But um yeah we can get quite a nice result. There's a bit of flow everywhere. And again there's nothing stopping us taking this. We can everywhere. It traces to the material and it only adds anything if it hits a water material. Um which is quite nice. Back Take quite a while to do this now because I'm hitting so many of the balls are going to be not affecting things. I mean, they're just falling through the ground or falling through the world. Um, but you're getting this sort of flow. If I just stop this and clear, set that down really low. You're seeing you're getting that kind of effect of the water coming out of this, this head here. Um, two. And the fact that it's faster on this side because that's where the rivers sort of come in, and this is going to be more of a shallows, more of a sort of slow moving water. So, um, not perfect, but flow maps are already, like I say, quite a, um, an approximation to things. So, hopefully, with a bit more time that I've put into this, you can get some decent results. Uh, let's jump back in here. Uh, these ones I've used five just to fill up the area. No problem with that. I could just start them all at once. Um, there's no flow to this, there's no movement. So all of these have some sort of fall to them, some directionality. Um, here I'm just spawning in spheres, and I think one of them has a force on. Shouldn't. Clear and reset. They're just coming in and falling, but obviously as two spawn on top of each other, you get a little random motion. So you're getting kind of like random turbulent physics style motion. Um, obviously it's colliding with these objects, 
something like this. It's got a bit of flow to it, or a bit of directionality, a slope to the edge, uh, and we're getting quite a kind of turbulent motion, not moving, static -y flow map. Um, obviously, it's really tanking the frame rate now. Um, there's a lot of physics objects going on here, but if I just toggle this clear. Oh, it comes right back. Um, you can say there's nothing. Um, Ever going to be running at one time with this? It's very much like an offline uh, production tool. Uh, and yeah, and then we have so um, it's moving around and bouncing off walls and stuff. Um, cool. Uh, next one. Obviously, they're physics objects, so there's nothing stopping us using physics objects to collide with them. Um, it's a very simple spinning glider, bit of mesh geometry, uh, blueprint making it spin. Um, and there it is, we're getting this flame up, this vortex out of that. Um, and it's pretty realistic because the speed of the flows and everything is coming from the speed of the object. Um, works quite well, quite like that one. Um, very nice. Let's clear them off again. Um, last one. What are we doing here? So it looks like the first one, but if I come in here and I just spawn a single ball, I'm actually aligning a texture to the direction of travel. So as that bounces off, you see that arrow kind of changing direction. Um, there's a couple of caveats with this. It only really works on straight runs because it's comparing the direction of the ball to the direction of the UVs and the local X of the object and the UVs have to be aligned on the material correctly to get that to work. But if you wanted to, um, you can do it. You can assign. Uh, why would you want to? Don't know. Uh, maybe a boat wake, something like that. Um, but it was a feature I wanted to get working. Someone might find a use for it. Um, you can get some quite cool things here. Uh, and obviously, I didn't mention it before, but if I go back to our turbulent flow here, I'm just using a noisy sphere. So rather than applying the kind of spherical blob, spheric sort of texture here, um, and that gives us full control over whatever textures you want to make for your sort of flow map painting, whatever kind of water you're trying to make. Um, a bit high. One, two. Yeah, you see, you're getting a little bit of that kind of arrowiness um, in the flow there. Yeah, so that's the tool. Um, quick breakdown of what it is. I just bring over my content browser here. A um, couple of blueprints, that's it. Just a, a simple flow map ball, so that's all the physics object um, that just like line traces down and spawns uh, or writes to the render targets. Um, the flow map manager, which is this guy, which spawns lots of objects uh, and then just a fizz map so it's checking to make sure that the thing it's hitting is set up with the right material um, the ball splat texture and all of these things that have been written are just textures they're just render targets so um, broken the view okay uh, so that's the grate and you can see this kind of like where the the interacting with those those fake metal bars. Um, these will reset if you close the engine now and start again. You can see here's one that's not in this demo scene. Um, it's just completely black, but there's nothing stopping us going in here, creating a static texture. So we've now uh, saved that and we could go in and reset and it's quite a quick iteration time so you can make a bunch of different flow maps um, quite quickly. Different uh, settings and everything. Uh, can it be deleted? Stop. Uh, and like I say, well, uh, these are all kept, so they're now still there. Um, but like if I close the editor uh, and, and restart it, they would go away uh, or go back to black. But let's delete that one for now. Um, so yeah, so that is the tool. Um, hopefully it's quite useful. Uh, one thing it does do, obviously any changes you make while you're in play and editor will reset when you come out. So if you've made any changes to the intensities and things, to go back and tweak those. Um, but there's nothing stopping us taking these flow maps. This is obviously quite a uh, simple opaque water. But I've got another water. Let's just test this. Let's tell it in the target which is to use. Text. 
see more complex trim materials, translucency and what have you. Um, this is going to take ages to compile, isn't it? Jeez. Uh It's going to crash the editing blindly. Yeah, you can see that, that that flow map being applied to that. That was fun. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's fine. Some things. So yes, obviously you can use your flow maps on whatever materials you want. Um, and yeah, that's the tool. So hopefully. Uh, as of recording this, uh, I'm going to be sending this out for some beta testing. Uh, I'd love to see it used in some production environments and given a bit more of a um, thorough test than my little test scenes. Um, so if you email me right now, you can get a free copy. Um, if that period is over, then it will be available either on my Gumroad or on the Unreal Marketplace, somewhere like that. So um, if you want to go and check it out there, uh, you can. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, hopefully it's, it's useful for some people or if you just want to learn a bit more about render targets and blueprints and you want to have a go and have a look at that that's cool as well um, and yeah and that's the tool so um, hopefully that's helpful